In the Big Apple, big dreams can come true. And on the season's final weekend, both New York teams have a chance to make pro football history. In the Meadowlands, the New York Giants can chalk up their first winning season in nine years and possibly their first playoff appearance since 1963. But to do so, they must defeat one of the toughest opponents in pro football, the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys have already wrapped up the NFC Eastern title. Winning seasons and championships are old hat for America's team, and they'll try to deny the Giants the chance to finish in the playoffs. What will determine today's outcome is the strong suit of New York, its defense, led by Rookie of the Year linebacker Lawrence Taylor. Taylor's arrival has been the catalyst that has made the Giant defense one of the fiercest in the league. Other stalwarts like defensive end Gary Jeter are the men most responsible for making the Giants a potential playoff team. Only one man on the crosstown Jets even knows what a New York championship feels like. Guard Randy Rasmussen, the last remnant of the 1969 Super Bowl champions. It's been 11 years since the Jets have qualified for postseason play. And they can clinch a wild card berth at Shea Stadium if folks like quarterback Richard Todd can continue their winning ways. But their task may be nearly as difficult as the Giants, for they are facing another hungry team, the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay hasn't been to the playoffs since 1967 when Vince Lombardi was still the head coach. And the Packers can make the playoffs if they win today. So to all you New Yorkers who think you've seen everything, well, you've never seen anything like this. For the first time ever, both the Giants and Jets can clinch playoff spots in the same year. It's the greatest football weekend in New York history, as two former also-rans reach for greatness. It's a Big Apple doubleheader. The Giants versus the Dallas Cowboys and the Jets versus the Green Bay Packers on the NFL Game of the Week. Brought to you locally by Cox Communication and Time Warner Cable. Dallas came into the Jersey Meadowlands sporting the best record in football, and its dazzling offense is one reason for such success. In Danny White, the Cowboys have one of the NFL's best quarterbacks, and running back Tony Dorsett is fighting for the league rushing crown. But the Giants' defense was unimpressed, and said so in their own special way. Giants had only allowed 18 points in a previous meeting with Dallas this season, and they seemed determined to permit considerably less this time around. The New York offense, however, mounted two solid first quarter drives and appeared ready to take the lead. But both times, swirling winds played havoc with kicker Joe Danello's attempts, as field goal tries of 21 and 27 yards both missed the mark. Meanwhile, the Dallas defense was matching the Giants hit for hit and tackle for tackle with a dazzling first half performance of its own. York's Rob Carpenter, number 26, was the main target for the Cowboy defense. And then the brutal hitting transferred over to the Dallas special teams and its leading tackler, Anthony Dickerson, number 51. early hit and subsequent penalty wiped out the Dallas recovery and when the Cowboys did get the ball back they continued to falter. In fact they didn't even get into giant territory until 18 seconds remained in the half. Then too they were shut down.
The first 30 minutes ended with the game in a scoreless tie, and as the second half commenced, it was more of the same punishment for Dorsett and the rest of the Cowboy attack. The Giants fared much better, ending the point drought late in the third period when quarterback Scott Bruner hit tight end Tom Mullody, number 81. Both Bruner and Mullody were in the first grade the last time the Giants were in the playoffs. Now with little more than a quarter to play and the defense going strong, it looked like it might be the Giants' time again. But the Cowboys didn't exactly see things that way, and they roared back after the touchdown when Danny White hit wide receiver Tony Hill, number 80, for the longest gain of the day. Four-yard completion placed Dallas in perfect position for the tying score, and they got it early in the fourth quarter when White found number 84, tight end Doug Cosby. The score now stood at 7-7, to -7 and things quickly grew worse for New York. A fumble soon after gave Dallas possession again, and the Cowboys nearly connected for another touchdown. Number 28, Beasley Reese, made the key defensive play, and Dallas had to settle for a field goal. But it gave them a 10-7 lead, which seemed safe until late in the game when Bruner clicked on a critical fourth and 13 pass to John Missler, number 85, keeping a giant drive going. With just 30 seconds to go in regulation, Joe Donello was called on once more, this time from 40 yards. And this time, Joe did not fail. Danello's kick knotted matters at 10 to 10, and it was on to overtime. On a cold, blustery day in the last game of the regular season, an extra period was just what the beleaguered Cowboys did not want. And they enjoyed matters even less when a Dallas fumble put Scott Bruner in position to play the hero once more. Bruner's bootleg put Danello in position to win the game as he got set for a 33-yarder. But the storybook finish would be postponed, at least for a little while. The kick bounced off the upright and was no good. And yet this setback did not seem to phase the giant defense. They just went out and got the ball back again. Playing in place of injured All-Pro linebacker Brad Van Pelt, rookie Byron Hunt, number 57, illustrated the dogged persistence of the magnificent giant defense as he turned in the biggest play of his young career. Hunt's timely interception put Joe Danello in place for a 35-yard field goal try. And Danello, with only one make and three misses already, was not going to be denied this time. With one swing of his foot, 
he set the Big Apple on its ear. The Giants 13 to 10 overtime victory against the Cowboys helped them reach one goal a winning season. But a playoff spot was still uncertain. All they could do now was savor the win, then sit back and watch the crosstown Jets battle the Packers. Ironically, a Jet victory would put the Giants into the playoffs. All of New York now eagerly awaited the shootout at Shea, particularly the boys from the Meadowlands. The biggest part of New York's greatest football weekend was yet to come. Giant Stadium may be across the river from New York City, but rest assured there are plenty of characters lurking about, particularly when a night game is on the schedule. The New Jersey faithful are decked out in their finest war paint for a game that will definitely change the face of the NFC East standings. Dallas coach Tom Landry has his Cowboys in first place, and he'd like to stay there, but he's going to have to get a win over the New York Giants to do that. A key weapon will be running back Tony Dorsett, the conference's number two rusher. Tony is also pointing towards becoming only the sixth man in history to rush for 10,000 yards in a career. To win, however, Dallas will have to get past the immovable object that is the Giants' defense. Ranked first in the NFL, the New Yorkers are especially tough at home, and they, like the Cowboys, are in first place and can remain in those lofty confines with a win tonight. A defensive struggle is expected, but sometimes big games like these don't come out the way the experts figure. From the New Jersey Meadowlands before a national television audience, it's the battle for the NFC East top spot. New York's defense is widely known to be very good, but Dallas can play a little D as well. They're ranked third in the league, but in this game, they would be severely tested by the passing of Giants quarterback Phil Simms. New York picked up a first down on their initial play from scrimmage, but then an inopportune fumble abruptly halted the drive. Veteran Cowboy linebacker Mike Hegman recovered the bobbled handoff, and the Cowboys were quickly in business. Then quarterback Danny White began his assault by going to a receiver who'd be running up big numbers all evening. Mike Renfro, number 82. Renfro had two catches to move the Cowboys into scoring range. And then White cashed in with a rollout turned touchdown toss to a tiptoeing Tony Hill, number 80. Hill's third touchdown of the season put Dallas in front seven to nothing, but the Giants were quick to retaliate. On the kickoff, Naval Academy graduate Phil McConkey, number 80, easily cruised through some choppy waters for a big return. The Giants had excellent field position, but were now facing the Dallas secondary. Nicknamed Thurman's Thieves, after their senior member, Dennis Thurman. These light-fingered lads already had 13 interceptions to their credit, tops in the league. But in the first half, at least, Bill Sims would not be victimized by their larceny. In fact, he profited at their expense. Quick completions got the Giants close, but when they could do no further damage, rookie kicker Jess Atkinson popped a 23-yard field goal that put New York on the scoreboard, making it 7-3. That would be all the scoring for quite some time as the Giant defense went to work. Lawrence Taylor is their acknowledged star, but another guy who's quickly making a name for himself is second-year linebacker Carl Banks, number 58.
Banks was the number one draft pick last year, and he's proven that selection was justified. Throughout the first half, the hustling Carl Banks was everywhere. Banks added one quarterback sack and numerous hurries as it was he, not the double team to Lawrence Taylor, making the plays. To try to defuse this defensive dynamo, Danny White went for quick passes to Renfro and Hill, and the strategy began to pay off. With the Giants now pass conscious, a running Tony Dorsett nearly busted one up the middle for a Dallas touchdown. Tony's lament would not last long. Just two plays later, the fancy footwork of Danny White gave Dallas enough time to notch their second touchdown of the half. Renfro gathered it in to make it 14-3 Dallas early in period two. Mike entered this game with 10 catches on the season. In the first half alone, he hauled in seven grabs for over 100 yards. The giant defense, which had given up no touchdowns in their win the week before, had now yielded two scores to Dallas after barely a quarter of play. The Giants began to chip away at the Dallas lead when Phil Simms spotted a streaking Bobby Johnson, number 88, over the middle. Then a passing combination that would prove to be extremely busy for the rest of the evening got the ball into field goal range. Sims to Lionel Manuel would be a familiar refrain all night, but for now their efforts could only bring on Atkinson's second field goal of the game, making the score 14 to 6 Dallas. <laughs> Nearly as popular a passing combo was Danny White to Tony Hill as the Cowboys slice through the Giants defensive middle on their next possession. Just when Dallas appeared to be ready to notch another score, the league's leading defense finally acted the part on a brilliant individual effort by safety Kenny Hill, number 48. Hill's one-handed theft pulled the plug on the Dallas drive. But then in the fashion nearly as rude, the Cowboy defense went after Sims and forced the Giants to move in the wrong direction. Number 72, Ed Jones' sack, helped get the ball back in Cowboy hands just before halftime. And once again, Danny White and Mike Renfro were eager to resume their profitable passing combination. When Dallas tried that once vulnerable middle of the giant defense, those friendly confines got very unfriendly in a hurry. The half ended with no further threat from Dallas, but as the third quarter began, New York's done.
51-yard score to Manuel, New York's leading receiver, trimmed the Dallas lead considerably. And even with a missed extra point, the Giants were trailing by only a 14-12 margin. That blown point after would prove costly later on. But for now, this play was the catalyst that would set off a second-half passing explosion by Phil Simms, a man whose performance would first delight, but then ultimately disappoint New York Giant fans. One thing was certain, however, the forecasted duel between two top-ranked defenses had gone by the boards. This was turning into a shootout, and the Cowboys knew they'd have to have their six guns well-oiled to survive. The Giants' offense had begun the second half in explosive fashion. Now it was time for the defense, the top-ranked unit in pro football, to flex its muscles. The man who did the damage was cornerback Elvis Patterson, number 34. Patterson's interception was his second of the game, and it left the Giants in excellent field position at the Cowboy 49. From there, Phil Simms went right back to work, getting the most out of his starting wide receivers, Lionel Manuel and Bobby Johnson, number 88. Both Johnson and Manuel would finish the night with over 100 receiving yards. Manuel added two touchdowns, the second on this bobbling catch in the end zone that gave the Giants their first lead of the game. Giants had come out throwing to start the second half, and had paid immediate dividends. The Sims to Manual connection had quickly erased Dallas's halftime advantage, and the Giants were in front, 19 to 14, midway through the third period. New York's scoring spree was not over yet. Their next touchdown was again set up by the defense, and again it was an interception, this time by Terry Kennard, number 43. Kennard's theft denied Dallas the go-ahead score, and it was soon followed by Phil Simms' third touchdown pass of the period, a 70-yarder to running back George Adams. Simms defused the Cowboys' all-out blitz beautifully, and his short pass to Adams was easily turned into six points. The Giants had now scored on their first three possessions of the second half. They were now in total command, leading 26 to 14 late in the third quarter. Bill Sims was on his way to the most productive yardage game of his NFL career. He would end up with 432 yards passing, the second highest single game total in New York Giants history behind Y.A. Tittle's 505. Even more remarkable was that Sims accomplished this feat on only 18 completions. First round draft choice George Adams waltzed into the end zone with his first NFL touchdown. The happy recipient of a perfectly executed play that made the Cowboys dangerous blitz look silly. Giant Stadium was rocking with excitement. The hated Cowboys were on the verge of extinction in this heated NFC East battle for supremacy. Both teams were three and one coming in, but Giant fans not only wanted to see their team win, they wanted to see Dallas squash. With three minutes remaining in the third quarter, that hope was becoming a reality, and rookie George Adams was more than willing to share in the fun. Cowboys needed a big play of their own to get back in the game. They got it from wide receiver Mike Renfro, number 82. Renfro was Danny White's main man against the Giants, catching a career-best 10 passes for 141 yards. And this 24-yard touchdown that quickly quieted New York's raucous crowd.
Renfro's scoring reception was just the tonic the Cowboys needed. Dallas had bounced back in a hurry with the most important score of the game. In danger of being blown out, the resilient Cowboys showed their character and now trail by only five as the third quarter came to a close. The tide was turning in this hard-fought game of big plays, and the Giants knew it. Despite their tidal waves of touchdowns in a wild third quarter, they were only up 26 to 21. How long could they keep puncturing holes in Dallas's outstanding defense? The answer came quickly, and it was not the one the Giants wanted to hear. Sims threw his first interception of the night to Dennis Thurman, number 32. A Cowboy field goal followed, and it was 26 to 24. The Dallas defense was just getting started. The Giants turned to their running game to protect their slim lead. When that didn't work, they were forced to throw, and Sims stared straight into the Cowboys' powerful pass rush. In the face of strong pressure, Sims fumbled deep in his own territory, and Dallas recovered. Suddenly, it was the Cowboy defense that was causing mistakes. On a night that featured many outstanding individual performances on offense, the Dallas defense would emerge as the game's most dominant force. Four giant turnovers in the final 16 minutes would turn out to be the most meaningful statistic of the evening. But now, midway through the final period, the teams traded field goals. The Cowboys' Rafael Septien booted his second three-pointer of the game to give Dallas the lead at 27-26. The Giants came right back with a field goal of their own. Jess Atkinson, replacing an injured Ali Haji Sheik, nailed a 47-yarder with five minutes left. And New York jumped back in front, 29-27, in what had become a tense seesaw struggle. The game was now in the hands of the Giants' defense, and the league's best unit was up to the challenge. They shut down Dallas when they had to. The key play on third down when Leonard Marshall's hit forced a Danny White incompletion. Calling out around the world, Marshall was dancing in Giants Stadium in anticipation of a New York victory. With less than three minutes remaining in the game, White and the Cowboys appeared to be losers. But the celebration was premature. A fumbled snap was recovered by Dallas's middle linebacker, Eugene Lockhart, and the Cowboys were in position to win a game that had seemed lost on several occasions. Rafael Septien calmly walked out onto the turf at Giants Stadium. Just over two minutes showed on the clock. Septien's brilliant career percentage was not a factor now. The question was whether he could save White from another inconsistent performance that featured not only three touchdowns, but also four interceptions. Tom Landry and the Cowboys watched from the sidelines. Their reaction would tell you all you needed to know about Septien's kick. The 31-yarder was good, and the Cowboys were ahead 30 to 29. The fourth quarter had become one of field goals, Septien's three to Atkinson's one, and Dallas had a one-point lead with two minutes remaining. Pro football's Superman felt as if he had just entered a world where kryptonite, instead of air, made up the atmosphere. This game had been one of those rare times when Taylor did not dominate from his linebacker position, and his feeling of frustration and disappointment was plain to see. The Giants' final chance ended with this interception by Everson Walls, and the Cowboys, in a strong come-from-behind effort, had beaten the Giants on the road. 
In the tough NFC East, every game is a tense emotional battle. The stakes are higher, with the victories sweeter and the losses more bitter. On this night at Giants Stadium, Taylor and the Giants swallowed a particularly bitter pill. They lost at home in a game they had well under control late in the third quarter. Their top-ranked defense had cracked a bit in a crucial moment, and then turnovers sealed their fate. Cowboys, on the other hand, had shown resiliency and character, two essential qualities over the long haul. They are now four and one, but the questions still remain concerning the erratic play of Danny White. Can White take this team to a division title? Only time will tell. But after five weeks, the Cowboys have shown that they know what it takes to win. The final score, Dallas 30, the Giants 29.